a whole new Trump. So since the events of July 13th, um, was it the 13th? Holy crow. I think it was the 13th. I think we've got a whole new Trump. So let's take a look at what that guy is going to be like. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Tarot fam. I'm Annabelle. I'm a tarot practitioner for over 35 years. This is Fortune Cookies Tarot. And in this video, we are going to talk about the whole new Trump that we're getting. So um, I did do a reading after the his speech at the National Convention, the Republican National Convention. And I did say he is a changed man. He is definitely very different. So I want to see what we're going to get out of him. And we're going to bust out the Le Normand because I do have my digital Le Normand class on. Uh, it, it, it is on my uh, landing page. You will see a link in the description of this video if you'd like to take it. There's also a free introduction to tarot class on there if you'd like to take that as well. Three days you can get an overview of tarot and be all set to take my tarot 101 class when it comes up in the fall, ready for school. So um, also if you'd like your own magical reading with me, I can use Le Normand, I can use tarot cards, I can stand on my head and eat a bug because I do do mediumship as well. Um, you can make an appointment at the link as well. I still have 20% off all my readings for the remainder of summer. So let's take a look. So we're going to start with the Le Normand because I just want to get a real broad view of where this new Trump is coming from, where he's headed. So let's pull up the card view as always. Thank you so much for being here. It's my favorite part of the day and I love to share it with each and every one of you. We're going to pull up that new card view. Everybody's seeming to like it. So let's get down and dirty with the Le Normand. So we are asking today about this whole new Trump, whole new Trump. Where is he coming from? And where are we going with this guy? Father, son, and the Holy Spirit. I always honor them in my splits. We're going to take our first card, heart of the matter, center of the deck, and we've got commitment with the ring right there. Today, I'm using the Ciro uh, Marchetti uh, Gilded Reverie Lenormand deck. We're going to pull another one from back here. Back in the past, in the way, way back beyond, we have the mountains, which is a challenging experience that we embrace and we move forward with it. It doesn't mean a hard stop. It doesn't mean that we can't get beyond it, but we've got the mountains there with the messenger, that first card. It's also called the rider. Moving on to crossroads. This is our change of story. So hard road to travel, hard messages, difficult things to overcome with the message that is being delivered. And now we come to a crossroads. Remember, we're working off this commitment here, this renewed commitment and faith. Back here, momentary luck. So when we're talking about clovers in Le Normand, it is fleeting momentary luck. It is a split second or a quarter of an inch from not being achieved. I have said this once, I'm saying it again, this was a fated event and somehow Trump moved his head and averted it. So what lies ahead of us with this new commitment? There is our changed gentleman. This is a renewed gentleman. Now, a lot of Lenormand decks will have two gentlemen in the deck. Sometimes there's an older one, sometimes there's a younger one. In this deck, the other gentleman seems um, a little bit coarser. Now, he's not coarse. He's not older. Um, but this one, holding the rose, barefoot, looking wistfully back at this opportunity. Um, Le Normand, it's always important to look where, where our cards are pointing to, where our gentleman is pointing to. He is looking back at this moment. Again, when he said at that Republican National Convention, I'm not supposed to be here. He meant it. He knows that he wasn't supposed to be here. So he is looking back on that gift, 
renewed faith with God. This is a covenant with God, a promise to God that he is going to do his very best. One card here. We have the woman in the past. This is, uh, uh, we're going to get to her. More lady, more lady in his future. And there's our gentleman. Look, a little bit more swarthy, a little bit more battle-like. So I'm going to say this is probably because we're in the future at this point. Kamala versus Trump. What is our outcome? Do, 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 do. The moon. We still have an undetermined outcome. Undetermined outcome with this battle. So this is the original battle from Donald Trump getting into politics, into leadership. It was a difficult climb. A lot of people thought that he was a joke when he started out. This is the message, a renewed message, a new information. We have this beautiful rainbow, which is renewal and refreshment. Then we have the crossroads. We are going to a different place. We are uh, veering off the road and going in a different direction. Here is our momentary luck with the renewed promise and the change, gentlemen. And here we go to battle with this moon, hidden secrets. What are some of the things that are lying under the surface? Um, hidden influences. The message of commitment and love from this gentleman. So this renewed message is going to be a very, very good thing. And this fleeting moment of opportunity that basically saved his life has transformed him into a kinder warrior. We do get this when we go on the diagonals. Um, this lady, we're going to talk about her with let me give her some more cards. Let's 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 do her because this is definitely Kamala here. So let's pick up Trump's cards and we will talk about Kamala real quick. We'll put her, we'll put her in the middle. We'll give her another card over her. Taking one from the center. There, we give her a storybook, okay? Secrets, secrets being kept. And we go up here in the past, more illusion, more things hidden, undetermined. Oh, and there is the wizened lady. That is the lady, and I just gotta cover her up for decency purposes. Um, this is the woman who has experienced more. She's older. She has seen more. She is more exposed. So the hidden things being exposed coming here. There will be momentary uh, situations of luck, chances that we can take opportunities from. She needs to be very astute in paying attention to those. We go back here. The whip the whip. The uh, the negativity that we're hearing about this transition for her is going to result in a cross to bear. So that that's easy enough. Moving into the future, what do we get? We get information, the letter, contracts, agreements, those kinds of things. Next one, we have the ship movement moving forward, advancements. But we have the mice. So the mice are little things that nibble away at the core of things. So we may see some dissension in the ranks, people not wanting her to quite make that advancement to the final destination. So let's go back to former President Trump. Let's go back to him. I'm going to put the Lane Ormond on the side. So let's switch it up back to tarot. How will this whole new Trump go to political war with Kamala? Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. I got it. Three, he is going to bring in other individuals. He is going to bring in resources that will be helpful. What crosses him? Uh, the conflict. So yeah, he really is thwarting the, uh, the norm, thwarting the status quo. 
in politics. And that is going to be a problem. Mitch McConnell is coming to mind. Mitch McConnell is going to be a little bit difficult there. And I, I apologize because I'm wincing a little. I'm still in pain under the surface. He does not have to stand alone. There are more people that think like him. Um, being such a disruptor politically in the past is not the worst thing in the world. Um, what is challenging to him is toning down his fire. We have this ace of wands up here. He needs to tone down that fire. Um, so here we have working with the collective, getting everyone on the same page because there's still people that want to go in different directions. And here, not standing alone. He does not have to be alone on this one. I think his near death experience, and we can call it that, I think effectively, his near death experience has changed him and has opened his eyes. You know, one may say the scales have fallen from his eyes, that there are more people that think like him than don't. And there, there is a, a bit more support behind him. Temperance, a kinder, gentler Trump. We are going to see that. He is going to campaign and debate very differently with Kamala. How he sees himself. He sees himself not as the ego that is going to win this role, but as the vessel that has been chosen to execute a task. He sees himself more as uh, being assigned this job than achieving this job. This is a very different perspective for him um, because he has achieved so much in his lifetime. The things that he has done, he has achieved through his will and through his actions. And this, he now sees himself as functioning as the apparatus of a higher power. It's going to be a very, very strong um, uh, sense of, of spirituality through him moving forward. I don't know if this is something that we're going to see out on the street that uh, the everyday American is going to see him as becoming, you know, very, you know, excessively religious or excessively spiritual. Um, but there, there, he has taken this opportunity, this chance, this second chance at life, very, very, very seriously. Um, and he does see this as a gift from God. So uh, for what that is, it is a, a, a very emotional and serious assignment that he is accepting. How do others see him? This is an amazing card right here, guys. This one, this, we're going to talk more about this all through the election because it's whew, the sense of emotion that I'm getting. Um, others see him as the emperor in reverse. He is loosening his grip on the scepter. He is loosening his grip on the control and the power of the office, the control and the power. He is trust falling into the arms of God, Jesus Christ, whomever. Um, he is going to put a lot of faith in God, a lot. He, he had a level of spirituality before. This has taken it to another. And I'm just going to stop there for a second because I do think he has already forgiven the shooter. And I think he is going to tell us that. I think he's going to say, you know, my would-be assassin, I forgive him for his transgression. I forgive him for what he has done. I forgive him for uh, being, being the agent of uh, such destruction and horror. I think he is going to do that. And I think we will hear that. Um, here, his hopes are that we do get our two parties, three parties, if you will, to work together. I think unity of the nation is going to be his call to arms here. Outcome, Ace of Swords, renewed focus, intellectual decision-making. We're going to have a renewed view. Now, keep in mind that Donald Trump was 
a lifelong Democrat. He became a Republican. This temperance card and this Ace of Swords, he is going to be reaching out to those people that are left leaning. He is going to try and lead them with a gentle hand over to his vote. I think he is going to pitch himself as more moderate. You know, he's got a, a tremendous following uh, and tremendous support from the far right. You know, this whole far right, MAGA, ultra MAGA, ultra MAGA right, crazy wing thing. I think he is going to really try and pull the scales, uh, the, the, the illusion off that and say, you know, we're all, we're all just Americans here. We're all flesh and blood. We all bleed. We all bleed. So this I think is going to be really, really tremendous. Um, the readings that I have done privately, I've never gotten this, this emotion of spirituality, the gratitude and the, the the gravity that he feels about the situation that happened. This isn't something that he's using as a campaign prop. It's not something that he is presenting as, uh, you know, taking, taking advantage of a chance thing that happened and he just happened to survive. He really does feel the hand of God was there. Um, and he really does feel that now he owes his God uh, a service, and that service is to lead the nation um, into better times. So uh, you can't really argue with that <laughs> unless you're completely bloodless and godless. So you can't really argue with that. So with that, I am going to wrap up this reading because I got a couple more that I want to do. I uh, Apparently, Jill is very upset and I want to do a reading on Jill. I'm going to try and get that out to you tomorrow afternoon. Um, but until then, thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, summer sale is ending very soon. So book your readings now if you'd like to get one. I'll see you all soon. Mm -hmm.